morning everyone. We are team Acme from Kolkata, India and and we will join both and we are going to pro present a proposed project on antimicrobial stewardship in resource limited healthcare settings. And this is our team, we will join both and Shokarupa Mukherjee. Now, the context and the background, as we all know, uh, AMR is a global health threat and uh, the antibiotic consumption in India is uh, shows that India ranks third in antibiotic consumption as in 2014 after China and the USA. And the antibiotic consumption has gone much up in India in the last uh, years. As you can see, the use of cephalosporins have gone uh, a threefold rise. And uh, yeah, just a sec. Yeah, the antimicrobial resistance for E. coli, the, there is almost 100% resistance to aminopolicin evencilins, as we can show, see in this graph. So, what are the causes, or major causes uh, that we are targeting uh, in, of antimicrobial resistance in India? It is mainly because of the consumers, the chemist shop owners, and the health service providers. That is leading to inappropriate and irrational use. Now, what do you mean by inappropriate use? By inappropriate use, we mean self-medication and non-completion of food courses. And irrational use include cut sell of full course of antibiotics that is mainly done by the chemist shop owners as well as prescribing broad spectrum antibiotics unnecessarily that is ultimately leading to antimicrobial resistance. Now, where aim is to assess the irrational and inappropriate use of antibiotics and ultimately to decrease it and reduce the unnecessary use and our goal is to reduction of the burden of antimicrobial resistance in the community. So, we propose our solution. Our solution is that assessment of irrational and inappropriate use along with the formation of central monitoring body uh, to which functions will come later. Now the assessment is at consumer level, at drug distribution chain level as well as the health service provider level which will be regulated and monitored and whose report will be sent to the central monitoring body. Now, solution at the consumer level. There shall be a QR code or a barcode present at every antimicrobial strip and when a patient is going to buy the antimicrobial strip, the pharmacist will have to scan the code which shall be linked with a specific software and that software will note a unique identification number that is carried by the patient. And after the completion of the full course, the patient will have to return the empty strip to the pharmacist and he will rescan. By this, we can get the necessary tracking of antibiotic consumption and information education and communication if necessary. Now, solution at the drug distribution chain level. This is the chain from the manufacturer to the pharmacist to the consumer and back to the pharmacist for rescanning after completion of the full course. Now, this, as the strip goes from under, under this chain, there shall be required QR scanning at every possible step. And because of this scanning, the entire distribution chain is going to get a certain subsidy as well as we will uh, get to analyze the entire chain and uh, do necessary interventions by the central monitoring body as we have already told. Now, the solution at the health service provider level, the central monitoring body is going to uh, promote e-prescription, uh, so provide trainings and orientation of medical education to the health service providers. Now, implementation at the consumer level. As we all were saying that uh, while buying, the patient has to produce an unique identification number also. The thumb impression will do because it will be noted in a specific software that is to be modified. And after buying, there shall be scanning of the strip. And after ending the course, uh, the patient will have to uh, give the empty strip to the pharmacist who will rescan. And on this rescan, the patients will get 5% bonus to the bank or is in cash uh, as applicable. But And if they don't return, they don't get the bonus. And now, the implementation of the drug distribution chain, uh, chain level, it is almost the same, the same chain. And there is possible scanning. And for this scanning, there shall be 5% subsidy given to the entire chain, as well as the consumer returns. And this information is going to the central monitoring body for further interventions. Now, why the government provide subsidy? 5% to the consumer and 5% to the drug distribution chain because it will ultimately lead to the reduction of hospital stay due to the patients uh, of antimicrobial resistance, reduction of prolonged treatment, cost reduction of AMR mortality and morbidity that will ultimately benefit the government in the long run and which makes this proposal a cost-effective and sustainable one. 
Now, implementation at the health service provider level, it is a promotion of e-prescription and copy of which will be sent to the central monitoring body and there shall be review of prescription by sampling and if any discrepancy is found, there shall be reorientation programs as well as regular orientation and CLE programs and guidance and assistance. Now, the central monitoring body, as I was telling from the very beginning, there shall be different straters from the central to the ground level through state, district and block. And due to the members of the central monitoring body, we are not going into the much details, but these members are already existing in different health fields in the country. And we are going to just assemble them to form the central monitoring body, whose main functions uh, shall be software modification, orientation program, programs, publicity in all uh, e and print media forms, promotion and audit of e-prescription, maintenance of records, as well as initial orientation programs, e-prescription audit, and information education and uh, counseling and awareness about AMR to consumer and pharmacists. Now, the measurement of impact. We have a certain planning elements and indicators and targets of which uh, some important are measurement of use of antibiotics, measurement of return, measurement of awareness and knowledge and e-prescription usage. Uh, and we target to scan and rescan almost 90% of the antibiotic strips manufactured and sold and 50% increase over the baseline score of the uh, awareness and knowledge as well as to include 100% of the medical practitioners within the program. So the next part will be continued by Shadur Bamukherjee. Thank you. Now the step up interventions. For phase one, we have taken into account for prescription audit, medical pharmacist training and reorientation of, of the medical education which is completely necessary for India because in India, it's uh, AMR is a global th uh, threat and also increase in public education. For phase two, we have proposed for laboratory upgradation in community health center level because uh, in our country, there is no antibiotic susceptibility test at the CHC level. So the doctors take about, uh, so the reports take about seven days to come. And within this period of time, doctors, um, they prescribe antibiotics, which, uh, and also uh, there should be introduction of AMR topics in the school books. Also a prospective feedback with re-planning and uh, the already uh, running health card project which is in our country uh, should be amalgamated with the project, sh uh, should be amalgamated with our proposal. This is our timeline of the project. We have uh, uh, estimated a timeline of three years. The resources, since uh, uh, this is our proposal and this is the existing government policies, our proposal can be amalgamated, can be merged with the existing government, uh, government policies. And the government of India shall provide funds for awareness program, formation of the central monitoring body, and for the software modification. Now the limitation. Suppose I am a patient, I am buying a strip of antibiotic, and the doctor has advised me to uh, complete it for 10 days. But now, uh, after taking two or three antibiotic pills, I am feeling better, and I am um, just keeping the other, I am taking the three pills, and I am storing the rest of the seven pills. Uh, so, uh, and uh, uh, during a similar, and I am returning the empty strip, and uh, as Ibijal said, the, I am getting the subsidy. But now, uh, during a similar similar episode of illness, I may use the uh, stored antibiotics, and this, in the long run, leads to antimicrobial resistance. Also, to get all the patients registered under this scheme so that there isn't any unlawful buy of any antibiotic strip whatsoever. Also, people in rural areas, uh, they opt for the quack medic um, medicines and also there is unavailability of certain antibiotic in the government setups. Now, the SWOT analysis. The strength is least resources is re required in our project, but the weakness is the lack of awareness among the common people. The opportunity decrease in AMR burden in the community and the threat is inappropriate and irrational uses of antibiotic. Now the budget for a uh, pilot project in West Bengal is coming to 0.1 million USD according to us. The expected impact that is the reduction of antimicrobial resistance in the long run by the measurement of root mapping, reduction of antibiotic use during the viral infections and completion of antibiotic courses, reduction of unnecessary use of broad spectrum antibiotics and also the reduction of mortality and morbidity due to AMR. References. Thank you. Yeah, I think uh, you're looking at 
patient compliance and having this card. I think this would be very good for a TV program where you have a patient that would come back back and forth for several times so you're looking at it at a longer period of time. But if you're looking at it as like an antibiotic for one week, I think it's going to be very costly, especially if you're looking at an incentive. I mean, it's not going to be... Uh, patients will not even come back. You know, you know, they will just have a health care contact for once, and for them to come back is going to be uh, very difficult. And having an incentive to go with it, in India it can be misused, and also it is open, if you look at it, India it's not probably sustainable to have that incentive uh, system in place. Mm, uh, okay, but I have something to tell you about this, because uh, in our country, uh, for example, when a medicine uh, costs rupees 100, that is, uh, I know 100, the government sells at the pharmacies, so which are connected to the government hospitals, at rupees 33 only. They give 66.66% discounts on these main medicines. Now, what if the government sells this rupees 100 medicine at rupees, for example, say 80? Now, when after completion of the courses, uh, the patient who has bought the medicine with rupees 80 returns, he gets another rupees 50, 50 back in his account. And uh, to be very honest, most antibiotics doesn't come uh, within rupees 100. So that may be a huge uh, benefit in part of the patients also. Right? We are on at that one. Um, yeah, uh, about this question of subsidies, uh, have you also think about investors coverage and uh, health insurance? That, for example, uh, if they would be uh, fully reimbursed, they need to bring it back. But I would think more sustainable to provide the uh, subsidies when you implement the health insurance uh, and reimbursement of medicines. Yeah, but, but uh, in our country there is already a subsidy based project running on the basis of an unique identification number that is for the cooking gases or the LPG. So uh, the subsidy based model is uh, already, I mean, what's that? Already, already in motion, right? So it is very much acceptable to the uh, people to get the subsidy. And for the, as you were telling, the um, health insurance. And that can be merged with uh, the health card project as, as it was mentioned in the phase two because the health card was linked with that unique identification number and it will store all the medical data of a person whether it is a consumption of antibiotics, lab reports, prescription of doctors, everything and that can be amalgamated with the health insurance too. Yes, I, I have never been in India, so apologies for my ignorance, but my impression is that there is a huge informal that's a channel of getting antibiotics and that it is not regulated. And your system is based on a regulated, let's say, formal uh, chain. So how does that work? Is my, you know, my understanding of what works in India as a role, has that changed or? Uh, yeah, actually in India, what we uh, do is that the pharmacists, they, they do a majority of cuts of antibiotics. They cut the full course strip and they sell. That is actually due to resistance. Uh, so, what we can do is, we can uh, keep a stringent law for the pharmacists that if you do this uh, and if you are caught doing this for uh, say six or seven times, or uh, you will be under trial or your license can be get cancelled and for mainly we, what we can do is the uh, information education counseling that is the major purpose of this program so that everyone gets aware of the fact that uh, it is a major health issue but do i need to go to a pharmacist to get antibiotics or can i just Pardon buy me? Can, can i just buy in at the market or you know no 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 it is um, always uh, at the pharmacist only Okay, you can get what the is the definition market. of a pharmacist? Uh, okay, actually by pharmacist we mean the chemist shops. There are particular chemist shops in the country and the always uh, and also the government based or hospital based chemist shops. That's it. Okay. Right. There's 20 more seconds, so I don't think there's time for more questions. So thank you, Ahmed. So we're closing on the final teams. Uh